Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to call our regular council meeting of Tuesday, February 22nd to order. We have an agenda in front of us. Do we have any additions or deletions from administration, Mr. Coleman? Uh, no additions or deletions, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Someone want to move that as presented? Councillor uh, Belazer, any questions? All in favor? Unanimous. We have two sets of minutes, uh, Mr. Coleman. Do we move them separately? Uh, separately, please, Madam thank Chair. Thank you. Someone to move the February 8th, Councillor Lewis. Uh, thank you. There's a name spelling error on page three of our package uh, for, for under staff members, the very last one. It it's, uh, should be Trevor, not Traver. Okay, we will make that. Other than that, I move is amended. Move is amended. Thank you very much. All in favor? It's unanimous. A second set of minutes from February 10th. We had a meeting with the city of Leduc related to the IDP. Someone want to move those? Councillor Wanchuk, thank you. All in favor? Unanimous. We have an opportunity at the beginning of every meeting for anybody who's not on the agenda that would wish to address council can come forward now. I am seeing none. And before I move on to 4B, uh, just a really quick acknowledgement. This is uh, Mr. Thomas's last council meeting. He will be retiring. So uh, we expect him to be on his very best or worst behavior. We're not sure which one it'll be. Uh, but um, just an acknowledgement that if he does start to act up, we know why. Um, but moving ahead, I would like to ask uh, Matt Gruninger to come over to the place over there where the sign thing is. Matt is our uh, 2021 recipient of the Albert and Maria Reimer Memorial Scholarship uh, Award and is currently in post-secondary and has slipped out today. I'm hoping he's not going to. Are you online or are you in person? Uh, it's reading week. So we have oh, it's reading week. Yeah. Oh, and you showed up during reading week. There you go, people. Here's the kind of guy that we have in Leduc County. All right, so I will come over there and I have a check for you. And maybe after I give you a check, you can give us a couple of words on what you're working on. And here you go. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm just going to stand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in just a couple minutes, what are you working on? What are your plans? Uh, oh, come on up to right there. Yeah. Just so we're live streaming. So right, right here? Yeah, sure. Uh, right now I'm working on a bachelor's of kinesiology at U of A. So um, it's in sport performance specifically. Um, I'd like to go to medical school after this. So it's this is kind of a jumping off point where I'm learning about things like physiology and anatomy. I think that'll be very applicable. And uh, I'm really appreciative of this award. Not only is it just, <laughs> just nice in general, but it's, it's gonna look great for an application in the future, such as med school, to be recognized by the county in this way. So I'm just really appreciative of that. Yeah, and thank you very much. Well, thank you for those. And, and you know, congratulations and good luck with your studies. That's, that's very <laughs> ambitious, but we need people like you. You give us hope for our generation <laughs> that there are the hard workers like you coming in on reading week uh to see us so thank you very much thank you very much all right and our second is a service award uh, oh it is not it is a staff introduction award i like to make mr honesty stand up and sit down <laughs> i'm very good at that so whenever you're ready uh mr honesty Thank you and good afternoon. I'm pleased to introduce uh, Courtney Rizer to uh, the council. Courtney has recently accepted a position, uh, a permanent position with Leduc County as our Parks and Recreation Administrative Assistant. Courtney, many of you have met Courtney already. She has been working for us on a various term positions over the last couple of years, but we're um, pleased to welcome her as a permanent position within the county. And she's already, already made great connections with the community and our services and uh, is hit the ground running. So we're pleased to welcome her to the team. Okay, well, come on over, Courtney. We'll take our official picture. And congratulations. It's nice to know that you've been with us for a little bit and you wanted to stay on. That's, uh, that's really great. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank
Yes, exactly. <laughs> Congratulations and welcome. All right, and now uh, Mr. Thomas, 35 years with the county. If I could just take a few minutes. Uh, you can take and, as long as you want. And because sir. we're live streaming, uh, I'll just sit at my desk here so everybody can uh, hear it on the on the speaker. So uh, it's it's my privilege to recognize Rick's 35 years of service with Leduc County. And it's bittersweet in that Rick has also announced his retirement and is leaving the organization uh, to pursue time with his family and, and personal endeavors that uh, interest him. So uh, Rick started his career 35 years ago, uh, running a chainsaw. We heard about that the other day uh, in our retreat with council. And back in those days, you had to bring your own chainsaw <laughs> uh, to work for Leduc County. But uh, Rick quickly advanced in the organization and moved into the agricultural services department uh, under Clive Goodmanson. Uh, that's where I first met Rick about 30 years ago. I was a fellow ag fieldman in, in Sturgeon County, and Rick and I have known each other since then. Uh, Rick progressed uh, through the organization and moved into a general manager role. Uh, and then in my time here, Rick has become the deputy county manager and has been a trusted and valued confidant, uh, friend, um, just someone who says the right things, listens the right way, um, someone I could have used, I could use as a sounding board. Uh, so he's been invaluable to my transition here. Coming here almost six years ago, it was seamless knowing that Rick was here coming in, the support he offered me, the friendship uh, made me feel very comfortable. And Rick has shown that throughout his career to all the employees that he's encountered, people he's supervised, people he's worked with. Um, I'm not sure people understand what a 35 year career in one municipality or one organization means those things don't happen anymore. Uh, people don't have that longevity. They don't have that commitment, that dedication. And in local government, that dedication and commitment translates into service to people. Uh, people that Rick lived with in his community, family, friends, uh, councils over the years. Rick's heart has always been Leduc County. And for that, I'm thankful. The residents and citizens of this municipality, I know we're thankful. Um, it is a big hole to fill. And there's many things we're going to learn that Rick just did. And that'll be the conversation for a while. Well, Rick did that. Yeah. <laughs> Rick took care of that. And that's a testament to Rick. The things that happen here that nobody knows about, that just happen, that make people's lives better. Uh, we're going to miss that. We're going to miss Rick. Um, he's not moving away. He's not leaving forever. His life is changing, but he's still welcome here. He's still part of this family. And I look forward to his visits and hopefully an occasional phone call when I need advice and guidance. Uh, Rick, thank you for your service. You're an amazing human being. Um, well, just uh, a couple of words, um, certainly not as eloquent as uh, our former county manager, but on behalf of council, you know, a heartfelt uh, thank you, Rick, for all the support you've provided to us, whether it's been uh, uh, five years, four and a half years, nine years, whatever it is, you've always uh, been a good shoulder for us. You've been, as, as the county manager said, a sounding board to help us work through problems. Uh, big problems, problems with neighbors, problems with uh, residents. You've always provided sound advice. And um, I know that I certainly will miss uh, you here in county chambers and uh, around the building. You always have a, a, a cheerful smile. You're always willing to, to lend a hand. And uh, very seldom is the problem bad enough that you actually get up and close the office door, which means that you usually have things under hand. But I'm just going to take a minute and uh, be, we do have a retirement for you uh, due tomorrow, but there's not an opportunity for any speeches there. So I'm just going to go around the table and if any counselors want to add anything, um, certainly we'll provide, let them have that opportunity. So Ray. Yeah, in my four years, uh, it's been wonderful to get to know you. Uh, I've thrown a lot of my problems that have come up and my inexperience your way and totally appreciate the help that I've got from you and uh, the friend you've become. Yeah, Rick, thank you very much for everything you do for us here. And we're, we know we're gonna miss you, but 
We'll shoot higher next time. You're not that tall. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, the Thomas name became pretty synonymous uh, around the time I lived in Kalmar. Uh, truth be known, I don't know whether it was you're the guy that I was supposed to look up to or whether it be somebody related to you because there's a lot of Thomases around in that area. And that was many, many, many moons ago. Through my time with the fire services, uh, you were always one of those guys that were there, pretty steady Eddie fella. And uh, certainly uh, my experience with you has grown a lot more in the past five years, to which I kind of understand what you did, but not quite really. Um, but you do uh, show a lot, of, a lot of those attributes that uh, are very kindly of you. So it's a pleasure to know you. Thanks, Rick, for your service uh, in my short time here in five years. Um, having, having your voice of reason and your, your other side of, well, have you thought of this? Or this is the history behind it. No one knows the history around both the county that, that I can see like you do. So um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll be getting calls on what the hell happened here. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, Rick, um, I got to say thanks. Rick and I went to school together in Kalmar. And we're talking more than 30 years ago. So we go back a long way. And when I first was elected and come in here, uh, it was like walking into a family because I kind of knew Rick and I knew Lynn and, and uh, it's, it's just been fantastic. And any help that I ever needed, Rick, you've been there. It's, uh, we're going to really miss you and, and I still know where to find you. Thank you. Rick, it's been about nine years. And again, coming, showing up here with not knowing a whole lot of the operations. You've always been patient. You've always taught You've always put the wheels back on my bus when they need to be put back on because sometimes I can get out there too far. I talk way too fast. I ask way too much. But you've been kind, generous, and you've taught me who I am today with being a counselor after nine years. So I know you'll do just fine out there with your new endeavors, personal endeavors for yourself, but definitely greatly missed. And I know I'll, I've been sitting at home going, well, oh, that's Rick Thomas's file. Now who's going to, who am I going to work with on that? So uh, again, Rick, I just can't uh, can't stress how much you've helped me in, in my position here. And again, kept me reputable, kept me going in the right direction. And as I said, when I get on the wrong side of the hedge, you always would pull me back over with great advice. Thank you. Okay, so come on over. We'll... Congratulations. So, so Madam Chair, Rick and I have a bit of a, a standing joke and it's, we've always said our last council meeting will be a doozy. Boy, are we going to tell them? <laughs> and uh, I've had the privilege of working for some interesting councils and uh, an amazing council. So I think Rick's words today are going to be pretty kind, but uh, as always, living up to our pact, Rick, the last word is yours, my yes. friend. Uh, thank you very much. Um, first of all, it's been an absolute pleasure. It has been an amazing journey. Sorry, it's just a little yeah. tough. <laughs> I'll, I'll get it together here. Yeah. Take your time. Um, yeah, I... I it is, it is, uh, it's pretty special hearing all of you. Uh, I, at times I'm wondering which Rick you're talking about, but um, <laughs> you know what? It is, it has been real special. Um, I've, I've worked with some amazing people here and I'll never forget them. Um, I want to thank Dwayne. I want to thank Renee. Lynn, thank you very much for putting up with me as much as you have. And, uh, to all the councils I've worked with, with all the staff that have been just fantastic. Uh, I'll never forget you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Rick. And, and no, we know that your fingerprints are on many documents. Your, your decisions are reflected in what our county looked like in the past and will continue for many years into the future. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Great.
I always said I would show up in my wedding dress at my last meeting, so I, I, I don't know. If... <laughs> All right, it's almost 1.15, so we'll have um, our public hearing people come forward and set up, and then at 1.15, I'll call us, um, get started. It is a public hearing, correct? Where are the public hearing words? And we're at 115, so I will call us to order at 115. This is a public hearing for bylaw number 0122, Queenie 2 Business Park Local Area Structure Plan, a bylaw number 2312 amendment. So council is here to listen to the information and make that is presented and make a decision on the matter of the hearing. This is a formal hearing and not a debate. Everyone wishing to speak who has pre-registered will be given an opportunity to speak to the matter as called on by myself, the chair. Each presenter must state his or her full name, rural address and their interest in the matter, whether they're in support or not support. Those individuals who choose not to identify themselves will not be given an opportunity to speak. Presenters are to stay within five minute time limit of their presentation and encouragement speaking to keep to the presentation to the point and refrain from restating points raised by previous speakers if possible. If you bring new presentation material, you will be asked to email a copy to our legislative coordinator. Do we have any registered speakers? We do not have any registered speakers. Thank you very much. And right now, I guess I will call on Dave to introduce the subject of the hearing. Whenever you're ready, sir. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> Please forgive the dates on the slide. That's uh, an error. This was um, February 22nd meeting. So the QE2 Business Park Local Area Structure Plan Amendments um, is proposed. The amendment lands in the plan area of the existing QE2. So it's proposing that the lands that exist that are circled in red there be identified as phase one. In the expansion area, which is the intent of this amendment, uh, be identified as phase two. Those are the lands east of the Nisku Spine Road. Uh, the proposed alignment amends with the, uh, aligns with the current objectives and policies of the Nisku Major uh, Employment Center Area Structure Plan. So the intent there is uh, in the North Nisku area or Nisku North area uh, to be able to provide business park, uh, uh, less disturbance, uh, business uh, industrial type of developments that will be happening on the east side. Uh, this is from the document itself, where they're illustrating phase one and phase two. This is a bit of a timeline. So on October 14th, the administration received the comprehensive amendment submission. Um, on December 8th, a public information meeting was held by the proponents in which they engaged the public uh, in regards to what they were proposing. There was no concerns at that time. On January 25th, this amendment was brought forward and given first reading by Leduc County Council. Uh, the advertisement for the public hearing was advertised on January 28th and February 4th, and there was no concerns at that time. Uh, so the public hearing was advertised there are two consecutive weeks, January 28th, February 4th, uh, as well as uh, through social media is the county webpage, Facebook, Twitter to reach the broader public. Uh, Alberta Health Services did respond in regards to the referral for this public hearing. Uh, that was in regards to the cleanup that was done on the site and the buildings that were moved and removed uh, and repurposed there. So um, based on those comments, we've worked with the proponent. They do not affect this amendment. Um, and they can certainly be addressed at a further stage of development, likely at subdivision. So there, uh, upon further review between the time of the January 25th first reading and now, there was some minor revisions that happened to the plan. So those revisions um, more so have to do or all have to do with um, the original iteration of this plan had an internal road coming down from 35th Avenue to access in the middle. Now access is being proposed off of Range Road 244. So we've provided um, an attached an Appendix A, which highlights the changes that were from the first reading. And those are related to the engineering design changes associated with that. So there's been uh, easements that have been provided for the water and sewer lines, um, further confirmation that no further accesses would be off the Spine Road and only coming off of Range Road 244. Um, administration has also confirmed that the referral to the Edmonton Metropolitan Region Board uh, approval is not required as the QE2 local area structure plan 
is um, in compliance with the NISQ major or NISQ major employment center area structure plan, which is a higher order plan. Uh, should this amendment to the QE2 uh, local area structure plan be adopted, the proponents will be bringing forth a land use bylaw amendment to redistrict the lands from agricultural to light industrial. So in summary, the planning and development department recommends that council give second and third reading to the QE2 business park local area structure plan dated September 23rd, 2021. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And a reminder, this is a public hearing, so we will be taking any clarifying questions right now for administration. I am seeing no questions. Well done, Dave. Uh, Mr. Coleman, did we receive any other relevant information that was not in our packages? Nothing from us, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Um, and just a clarifying question, Mr. Coleman, are we the applicant in this case? No. Okay. Okay. So what we can do is we can, uh, thank you, Dave. We have no questions for you. And the applicant present, would you like to come forward? Yeah. Introduce yourself for the, uh, uh, for the uh, council and then begin any comments you may have. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Bladen Dibbon with Select Engineering, working on behalf of uh, the applicant. Um, Mr. Brian Middleton's here as well to answer any questions. Okay. We don't have a presentation. All right. So any questions for the applicant? I am seeing one. Go ahead, Councillor Smith. It may not be appropriate, uh, just again, looking for, um, I'm just looking for um, some information on servicing. And I noticed that, uh, again, if it's not an appropriate question, just tell me. Uh, looks like we're going to be servicing from 35th, or I should say 244, is it? Is that going to be uh, within developed by, upgraded by the developer at this point? Two, 244 for transportation upgrades would, would have some transportation upgrades along there, yeah. Okay, and is that, uh, is paving of the whole section from uh, 510? So 35th Avenue on the north would be extended yep. over to yep. 244 and then upgrades down to the access uh, okay. to Thank the development. Thank you. Any further questions for the applicant? Okay, seeing none. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we have, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak to or for the, uh, I'm seeing nobody speaking on behalf of the bylaw. Any further questions for our administration? I am seeing none. So with that, I will close our public hearing at 122 and open up for debate and motions. Councillor Vandenberg. So we've had the opportunity, the privilege here in council to um, be familiar with this and uh, this project for some, some relatively short period of time and uh, some of the interesting ways in which they uh, are dealing with their property. Uh, I would be uh, uh, wanting to move second reading. Okay, second reading is on the floor from Councillor Vandenberg. Any comments, questions or debate? Councillor Smith. Again, I think it's a really good idea. We'll be supporting the second reading today and third subsequent uh, third reading as well. It's uh, it's nice to see people have faith with Ladue County and are developing in our areas. Thank you. Thank you. Well said, Councillor Smith. And it does allow us to be shovel ready, as they say, for the new developments that will be coming our way. Second reading is on the floor. I'm not seeing any other hands up. All in favor? Looking for someone to move third reading. Councillor Belazer, third reading's on the floor. Any further comments or questions? I am seeing none, all in favor? That is carried unanimous, thank you. Good luck with your development and know that council is here anytime if you need any other support. Thank you. And that's for you too, Dave. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. That's a good news story. Moving on to Mr. Honesty, violent risk threat, Nope. Violence threat risk assessment, community protocol agreement. And this is something we're familiar with. With council, whenever you're ready, sir. And Miss Russell. I don't know what they're doing. But... Hovering. <laughs> we're dancing. Is he hovering? <laughs> it'll look like flying back and forth. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. I've invited Sarah to provide the update and presentation to council, and uh, I will be the IT specialist. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> no, not a rec guy. <laughs> I might be in trouble. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon. I am here to talk about the, the VITRA protocol. I will be using the, the acronym VITRA. It stands for Violence Threat Risk Assessment. This protocol outlines the obligations of community partners in preventing and responding to threats of violence, both in our schools and in our communities. In the Leduc region, this partnership includes the public and private school districts, the RCMP, Alberta Health Services, Children's Services, and all the municipalities. The partners agree to work together for the common goal of threat reduction in school and sorry and school and community safety. We proactively share information, advice, and support that assists in the prevention of a threat, potential threat of violence. This protocol allows the partners to respond to worrisome behaviors and changes in baseline behaviors instead of waiting for an incident to occur. Through FCSS, Leduc County plays a supporting role in the VITRA response. We are usually only included in the stage one response when we are identified as having a current involvement with a family. In most cases, we are called to stage two to support the wraparound services that are offered to families. In the case of a traumatic event, FCSS plays an active role in the community level response and recovery. We would ensure that the community is aware of services and supports that are available and bring in additional resources as needed. Council support of this protocol allows us to have an active role in this committee and access training for staff. The committee provides a network of professionals who can be of support to each other in times of stress or crisis. Safe communities are communities that promote open communication and a culture of information sharing and reporting of concerns. All professionals, including community members, and even all children and youth are encouraged to report their knowledge of any child or youth's high risk, high risk behavior or having reasonable grounds to believe there's potential for high risk be or violent behavior to the RCMP or to a school administrator. We actively encourage anyone to seek support for worrisome behavior, as this is a social responsibility for the well being of all. The Leduc and Area VTRA Committee is hosting its a virtual annual general meeting on March 10th at 9 a.m. And we have forwarded an invitation to you and hope to have you in attendance. The Leduc and Area Community VTRA Protocol is based upon the North American Center for Threat Assessment and Trauma Response, also called NACTATAR. Uh, their model of threat resist, sorry, threat risk assessment. We are recommending that council re-sign the protocol for the continuation of this partnership and to recommit to a unified response to violence prevention in our schools and communities. Okay, thank you, Councillor Smith. This is an initiative that we've been in for some time. So today the recommendation, uh, the council approved the signing for the Violent uh, Threat Risk Assessment Community Protocol Agreement. I uh, moved that recommendation today and I'll just speak on it for a second. This was developed uh, in the school system when I was a teacher and it came out of uh, Tabor and there was a tragedy that occur occurred in the school. A Mr. Cameron, who is still involved in the executive director is there and Patty Hill worked for the Wetaskiwin division as well. So it's something that's been here for a long time. I've seen it work, it does work actually. There, there's uh, benchmarks that they hit and sometimes we can either help or prevent tragedy. So again, moving the recommendation today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further comments or questions? Councillor Lewis? Uh, I too will support this. I look at the list of partners that we have on there and some pretty amazing people out there that are all looking uh, for the best interest of children uh, and the school. So I will support this today. Absolutely. All right. Not seeing any other comments or questions. All in place, favor or flavor. That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will sign. And you're on next, Mr. Honesty. Uh, Matt, you are welcome to stay. I'm sure you know, or you can go. I know it's reading week, so I'm, I'm not sure that we were. Oh, good. Okay. Well, that. Thank you. That, that is like the best thing all year. <laughs> All right, just letting you know that we weren't going to hold you. I wasn't going to sign the check at the end of the meeting. Okay. okay. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Honesty. And actually, it might be a good time to remind him that we're currently hiring for seasonal employees. If there's, an, if he wants to update his resume. It, Does he have his own chainsaw? <laughs> no, no need. <laughs> Well, no we've need. changed that role. The policies okay. have changed since then. We will okay. provide the chainsaw. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you. We, uh, we have a recommendation uh, before you. Leduc County, as you're very well aware, is, um, has established cost sharing agreements across the region. Uh, through those agreements were amended a, a few years ago. And uh, with the Leduc and Beaumont agreements, we have established uh, council committees. The council committees are in place to allow us to have effective communication and uh, cooperation between our partners and to involve council in that process. Uh, this will be, uh, we will be due in 2022 for renegotiating our cost share, as well as having some conversations with our partners around how we can improve our relationship. So we are asking council for their support uh, through our committees. We assign two representatives, one to the Leduc committee and, and or two, sorry, two council members to the Leduc committee and two council members to the Beaumont committee. We anticipate uh, two to three meetings uh, taking place. I wrote April, May. I think it's maybe our intent to maybe start those meetings here in March if schedules accommodate. So, um, but I anticipate maybe two to three meetings and we'll bring any information from those committees or any um, recommendations back to council for final decision. This is just a, a opportunity to collaborate and uh, have some discussions. Okay, thank you. So um, thank you. We understand what the committee's for. I will look for some either uh, nominations or expression of interest. And I will start with the City of Leduc Committee, Councillor Smith. Actually, I just have a question oh. to Dean. Um, Dean, in your background, it says that uh, you'll be updating the three-year funding agreement. Now, is this for capital and operational? Or is this just an operational group? The It, it is. It, We'll be reviewing the entire cost share. The three-year contributions are operating contributions. We also have a process for capital um, contributions as well. So um, as council is very aware, we'll have to have some conversations around that process through this, this committee as well. Um, but formally we will set those three-year operating, but we'll have to review any issues from either side related to how we're operating currently with an existing agreement. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to move the recommendation, but I'd be more comfortable in the recommendation if we indicated that it would be operational and capital cost shares. Just uh, again, we're looking for clarity with these um, with these recommendations going forward, and then that would give the committees that ability so to negotiate you're looking, both. Your motion would be the Duke County appoint two members to each of the city of the Duke and city of Beaumont capital and operational cost share planning and consultation committees. I would be more comfortable with that. It's your motion, sir. Okay, I will make that motion with those in there. Dwayne has a point, and I might be wrong. No, I, I think that's a good addition, Madam Chair. Just uh, perhaps we need to appoint the members as part of that motion. Right. So, yeah, and uh, we will. So we'll leave those individuals. Yeah, we yeah. just want to get the motions yeah. on to do it, and then we'll add those people. I'm looking for anyone who is either interested um, or would like to appoint someone to be interested in the city of Leduc. Councilor Danberg? Uh, I am definitely interested. Um, Division three, three totally encircles uh, City of Leduc and it borders up to the west side of Beaumont. So I'm actually interested in both areas. So you have to choose one. They'll be they'll be so hotly contested. So does it say that I only can get choose one? Um, it's uh, it doesn't say that. We'll see where else there's interest. Would you like your interest? Which one would you have your primary um, interest have, on, sir? I would. I don't have a primary. Okay. I, 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 okay. I, either one is what I'm hearing. Yeah, either. Okay. Councillor um, Lewis? I'd be happy to put my name on Beaumont, and if no one else wanted to, I'd put my name okay. on the city of Leduc as well. Okay, anyone else interested in the city of Leduc? I, I, I would like to sit on city of Leduc. I had an opportunity to sit on the city of Leduc last term, um, probably bring a little bit of, I'm hoping a bit of continuity there, or some, some learning, is are people okay with that? Okay. And one other person, we have Councillor Lewis on Beaumont. Anyone else interested in Beaumont? Councillor Smith? I will put my name up. Uh, again, getting the marching orders really helped today if we're negotiating operating and capital at the same time with an outcome. So I'll let my name stand for the city of Beaumont. Any other, anybody interested? We can always go to an election or someone can step down if there's somebody who's, yes, sir. I would uh, withdraw from Beaumont then. Okay, so we have uh, we have Councillor Lewis and Councillor Smith for Beaumont. We have Councillor Vandenberg and Councillor DeBlanco for Leduc. Yes, I will take my name off Leduc. Okay. There you go. There's your team, Mr. Honesty. Thank you. Um, any further comments or questions on that? 
going to call the question all in favor. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Dean. On to Capital Region Southwest. I don't know other words there. Uh, right away agreements. Water Commission. Wastewater. Water or wastewater? Uh, okay. Oh, that's water. It is water. I knew it. Whenever you're ready, sir, these are okay. right away agreements. Yes. Uh, so the Capital Region Southwest Water Services Commission has completed an agreement for the purchase of zero, sorry, 1011 MC lot B from the county for construction of a booster station. This is something that was previously discussed with council. The Water Commission requires utility right of way agreements through adjacent county properties, specifically Plan 720566 lot 4 MR and Plan 5043 TR lot C to construct a permissive pipeline to and from this booster station. The location and alignment for the pipelines was determined through the discussions between the Commission and the Duke County administrations. This minimizes the impact to the county lots while accommodating Alberta transportation's crossing requirements. The sketch in attachment one depicts the right of way in red. So this is on lot four MR. This is the right of way that's required in this box here. The yellow area here represents the working area where they need space to construct the line or during the construction of the line. The second attachment, um, very similar uh, description. The area in red shows the right of way required through the, the county lot. This would be, I'm sorry, I'm just going to plan number uh, lot C uh, to construct the necessary pipeline to the booster station located right here. And the yellow area shows the working area that would be necessary to uh, allow the construction of the pipeline. And then lastly, what they need is proposed easement access and parking lot. They will get access to lot B through the county lot C. And this would be a common access point along with the parking area on Leduc County property. Whoops. We've reviewed the agreements and any amendments that have been required by administration have been completed. So administrative, we are satisfied with the agreements. Thank you. Mr. Mergland, where does the compensation go? And I know I have this, this wife just came in. So like, do we have a, a fund where we put this for sale of land? Does it go into utilities? Does it, um, right? But she's right behind you if you yes, need her. If, I, I didn't try and set yeah. you up. I did see her sneak in, so. Sorry, could, I didn't see you there. Repeating the question. Sure, where um, there is some compensation from these right of ways, to what um, pocket of money or or account does the does the money go from the sales of this right of ways? It's not specifically dictate. It's not specifically set out in our uh, in our reserves policy. However, we do have a land management reserve that we do have set up. Uh, typically, we look at those on a one on one basis. Okay, thank you. Well, Further questions for Mr. Merglot? Go ahead, Councillor Vandenberg. <clears throat> Just for the benefit of those who may not know, what is the significance of this uh, piece of business? Okay. The Water Commission and EPCOR have completed a, an agreement in order to sell a portion of infrastructure. This is be a, a component of the main transmission line that provides water from the city of Edmonton. To to Edmonton International Airport, Leduc County, City of Beaumont, City of Leduc, the town of Millet, and to the town of Kelmar. Uh, part of the sale was the booster station that's presently located just south of 41 Avenue Southwest. This would be the construction of a new booster station and a necessary pipeline in order to continue to provide the necessary pressures and water supply to all the commission members. Thank you. So okay. it's, it's fairly significant. It's that it is. All right. Thank you very much. Any further questions? 
If not, I will put my name to the motion, uh, recommended motion uh, that council authorize the executing of the utility right away and temporary workspace agreement for plan 8720566 lot 4 MR. The utility right away and temporary workspace agreement for plan 5043TR lot C and the easement agreement for access and parking for plan 5043TR lot C. Thank you. Any questions on that? Thank you, Councillor Vandenberg, for clarifying the importance of this. Seeing nothing else, all in favor? As unanimous. Thank you. And I do not have the radio announcer voice of my colleague over there, but it was a little bit like reading. It is. And on to 6D, 6C1. 2021 carry forward on project funding approvals whenever you're ready. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. I am here today to bring forward our second of of four, I guess, year-end uh, recommendations. So this one is the transfer of reserves for any project carry forward requests. So these are any projects that were 2021 or earlier that weren't completed in 2021. So there is a total of $1,438,029 on the list. If you do my, yes, thank you. Um, if you go down to the attachment on the carry forward requests, what I've kind of noted is there's a theme this year when it comes to 2021. So several of them are related to supply chain and or COVID delays, and several of them are multi-year projects, which were anticipated to take several years. So through that, if do you have any questions on any of these carry forward requests? So John. Projects that weren't finished, so we need to carry forward money to finish. That's right. Any questions specifically on any of the ones listed? Councillor Smith? Um, just a clarification on number 11. Um, I think it's design. Is it design work for the 510? 220,000 carrying that forward. And I know there's some discussions coming back um, or else we deferred them. Uh, would that money then be moved in uh, the ability to move that into a change uh, if we do a change on the two lanes that were originally budgeted and scheduled for this year? So the project specifically was for the design of Township Road 510. So what we would do is bring forward a second, a project related directly to okay. what the outcome is. So those funds are currently sitting in a reserves, in a reserve. When we do these transactions, we Put, set them aside in a reserve so we could use reserve funding to offset, but it would come in a separate project. Thank you. That helps. Okay. Thank you very much. Any further questions on the specific projects listed there? Carry over to finish them up. I am seeing none. Can we move to your second uh, and this recommendation there? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So the second one is about 2021 funding approvals. So these are any projects that went over budget throughout 2021. A lot of these have been seen through the quarterly reporting. This is the actual process to get funding approval from council. So we did have 10 projects that were over budget. The largest one was the Rural Road Initiative. That one did go over by hundred, just under 170,000. Due to some frost boil repairs, there's details within the narrative there, uh, frost boil repairs, as well as a shoulder pull in hay lakes that required some additional material. That's by far the biggest component of this list. And so what we are looking for today is an additional $203,239 of tax dollars to fund those over expenditures in 2021. Councillor Lewis. Can you clarify the Hay Lakes? Is that the road or the actual little hamlet? I am not certain of that one. Oh, maybe perhaps uh, Councillor Smith, uh, Councillor for the area, can you? If I could jump in, it is Hay Lakes Road heading south of New Sarepta. There was a shoulder pole done on that project last year. Thank you. I just, for clarification wise, because I don't want to be doing work in Hay Lakes. <laughs> That's fair. Thank you, Councillor Smith. <laughs> Any further questions on the second list, which is um, over expenditures from 2021 projects? I am seeing none. Um, 
Mr. Coleman, we want to move these separately or together or? One motion would be appropriate, Madam One Chair. One motion for both. All right, looking for someone to make a motion to move transfer of 1.438029 to reserves to support 2021 project carry forward request, detailed breakdown attached, and number two, approve the additional 200,000 203,239 of tax dollars to fund over expenditure in 2021 projects, detailed breakdown attachment. And that's you, I'll Councillor Smith. Thank you, it is, it is not unpopular, we're, we're getting closer. <laughs> all right, any further questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? It's unanimous, thank you very much. And I believe we have one more from you, do we? We do. So this next recommendation um, is a little different than, than similar ones I've brought in the past, yeah. but on February 3rd, we did receive a request from the landowners, from a landowner stating that they had been charged interest. So administration relies on that Canada Post stamp on the back of the envelope in order to determine whether mail is on time. In this particular case, the deadline was October 31st, uh, so a penalty was applied on November 1st. Because we didn't have that postmark, our next go-to is reasonability. So when we look at the fact that it was received on November 3rd, which is three business days following, it seems reasonable to assume it was sent on time. So my recommendation in this particular one is that we approve the request to cancel the tax rolls. That is very different for you, Ms. Weiss, I must say. And, and it's interesting that it is about the cancellation because I've received a number of letters with no cancels on the stamp. So whether it's not happening as much or what's going on with our postal service, not my job, but yeah, interesting. Any questions on the recommendation to approve the request to cancel penalties? I am seeing no one. I'm looking for someone who would like to make a motion then. Councillor Balazza, you would you like me to read it out or are no. you going to do it? You've got the eye. Okay, recommend that Leduc County Council approve the request to cancel tax penalties on rolls 8620001, 8620005, and 8823500 for $195.93. $28.27 and $790.69 respectively. Just what you would have said, all in favor? Oh, comment. Uh, again, that is a little different for you to recommend doing that. Uh, I have a real problem with doing it. These come back and just trying to be fair, trying to take circumstances in to account however my bank asks that I have money into them on certain dates without Canada Post reconfirming that. I can pay my credit card bill a week before. Sometimes they post three, four days later. So the bottom line is the he could he she could have walked in. He she could have mailed two days earlier. I'm not sure this is a Canada Post problem. I think the deadline was set. I think it's pretty standard on our world for people to say your payment much re must reach us by the due date. So I won't be supporting the motion before us, and I will be, if it's lost, uh, bringing forward the alternative one to uh, to not waive. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Lewis. I too will not support this today. Uh, we seem to be getting a lot of these. Um, I don't believe it's an error on, on our part or Canada Post, whether or not there's a post date or not. Um, like Councillor Smith said, they, our residents or, or businesses know the dates that they're due and it's our job to make sure, or their job to make sure that they get payment in on time. So I will not be supporting this. Thank you. Oh, I have two hands up, uh, Ms. Klamosko and then Ms. Weiss. Um, so our current practice has been that um, we've asked for it needing to be mailed prior to the date. So if that post stamp was on the envelope, then we would have considered that on time. If it would have had the October 29th stamp on it, we consider that on time, even if we received it after the November 1st penalty. That's been common practice for our municipality for, for many years um, to look at that postmark. So, um, so we've applied a methodology just to, to look at the number of days in terms of there's no postmark in rec the receipt in the trend, like the 
kind of the transfer or the um, mailing of that envelope. So we don't have that requirement. I just want to clarify, we don't have that requirement that it must be in our hands on the day of, because that has not been our practice in the past. We've looked to the postmark. Thank you. Ms. Weiss? And I, thank you, Ms. Klamasco. I was also going to speak to some of the processes in place. We do have the Canada Post, which uh, Ms. Klamasco just spoke to. And in addition, if you pay by through your bank, we have processes there as well to know we can determine when somebody actually sent it, and then we can make the call of whether it's on time or late. This particular case, we went to reasonability. We just can't prove that it wasn't mailed on time. So. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Vandenberg? Well, based on the presentations given by administration, uh, they're comfortable with uh, this recommendation is why that they are suggesting that we waive it. Um, as far as us judging uh, the business practices of others, um, as long as they've met the criteria set by our administration to which they say that they have, um, unfortunate that you can't prove one day versus the next day, which is really what this is. Um, I have no problem supporting the recommendation in this regard. Thank you very much. Councillor Smith. Um, Canada Post seems to be the common denominator in all of these requests to cancel them. Um, I'm just wondering for the people that claim that Canada Post doesn't deliver 10% of our tax notices, whether we should be waiving them too, because we can't prove that they didn't get the letter from Canada Post. You know, so I'm kind of going, if Canada Post is a convenient um, scapegoat and allows us to be late, um, or I'm next year, I might just say I didn't get my Canada Post and I may not pay you for a while. And you need to be fair with me too, because you can't prove the Canada Post didn't deliver your letter to me and I didn't get it. And I don't know that I need to pay taxes until you come after me. So you got to be careful about who we believe. There's, I bet there's been 50 cases I've gone through and I've doubted the Canada Post had failed to deliver the letter based on the claim. So on this one, are my taxes late? No. You know why? Because I know they need to be paid on time. Are my credit card bills late? No, because I know they need to be paid on time. I could call the Royal Bank and say, hey, you know what? My, my internet was down for four hours and they're not going to give me a break. So we need to have a consistency or a policy with this because they come back to us. And I fear it might be the flavor of the day if we were to move this forward today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just before I take Councillor Vandenberg for a second time, um, I, I will support uh, this, the motion to um, re return. Um, there is a reasonableness, right? I mean, they got it on the 4th, so it's, it's reasonable that it was in early. If this continues to be an issue with postmarks, which is interesting because it's something I've noticed in my own business, I think we're going to have to change how we look at this. But as of today, I believe there's enough, um, there's enough, I guess, uh, chance that it was done in a reasonable fashion that got it here on the 4th that I would be supporting. Councillor Vandenberg? Uh, just a comment that uh, this debate shouldn't be over the chain of custody in this regard. Uh, administration has presented to us the facts as they see them. And... Um, Gauging that to the protocol and the processes that they use, they are satisfied. That's it. That is what we're talking about here today. And so once again, for that reason, I will support the recommendation of administration. Canada Post and chain of custody is another conversation. Okay. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Councillor Smith, Councillor Lewis, motion is passed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come on forward, Mr. Broadbent. And whenever you're ready, sir, you can begin. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, before you today is a recommendation that Ladue County Council authorize up to 55,000 to be used from the capital asset life cycle management, machinery and equipment management reserve or internal savings to fund the increase in price for the purchase of one tandem gravel plow sanding truck. Um, and it was uh, part of the interim budget approval uh, capital project 20. 
2022 CP004. Um, within your within your uh, report, Madam Mayor and Council, um, it, it explains in depth uh, the process, the procurement process that we went through um, just in the in the new year, um, procuring uh, a capital asset, and that being a tandem plow truck that you're familiar with, with all of the winter attachments. Um, we did receive um, four quotes back, and this one quote of three hundred sixty-one thousand uh, in change was the most affordable. Um, multiple reasons for uh, these increases are list, listed in this um, cost increase, um, you know, and I can just touch on a couple of them. Um, as you know, and have experienced in other areas, additional price increases through the supply chain um, have necessitated additional price increases on the finished product. This equates to roughly 13 to 16% increase. Uh, the, hy the hydraulic system for our plow trucks, the Rex Roth hydraulic system and its components have increased by 26,000 in the last year alone. Um, a similar style cab chassis and gravel box increased by 14% in this last year. Um, and then, you know, a, a couple other explanations there. Uh, we are fortunate that um, we did receive, so we have a, we are constructing a truck right now. It's a, it's a 2021 project. This is a 2022 project. So we will have, uh, if council approves today, two new plow trucks coming online, hopefully within the next um, six to eight months, which we are in real need for. Um, we have two units right now that are um, aging significantly and due to the corrosive nature of the materials we use, um, they are worn and worn heavily. So, so my recommendation would be uh, that council do approve um, or does approve this recommendation today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Vandenberg. So that was going to be my question is, do you really need to have this truck? And you've done a great job in uh, addressing that for me. Yeah. I just want to know, does it come with uh, studded tires? <laughs> <laughs> Are you willing to make the motion then, Councillor Vanover? Yes, I will. And could you read it into the record because we are live streamed? The Ladue County, that Ladue County Council authorized up to 55,000 to be used from the capital asset lifestyle management, machinery and equipment management reserve or internal savings to fund the increase in price for the purchase of one tandem gravel plow sanding truck. Um, as per our budget item 2202, CP, that's Charlie Paul, 004. Thank you. We have a motion on the floor. Councillor Lewis. Thank you. I will support today's motion. Uh, Mr. Broadbent is very um, penny wise and would not come and ask us for this uh, allocation of money if he didn't actually need it. So thank you. I too will support the motion. Um, my my long-term wonder is as we continue, and I thought your outline of why the costs, including supply chain, as that increases, how do we how do we know what we're throwing our numbers at? I mean, if they're going to change within three months, six months, eight months, we're going to have to keep a little bit more flexibility in that budgeting and or be more cautious with what. And I see Mr. Coleman, any comments on that or yeah, I think Madam Chair, that's what we're facing probably the next 24 months uh, for sure. And so at budget time, obviously, we're going to have to be a, a, a okay. little more um, in-depth, I think, when we're looking at Mind. some of our price yeah. uh, numbers. Okay, there it is. And we are we can get this vehicle, correct? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Any other comments? Councillor Scobie? I guess just comment on it. First, I guess the question, by, I think I asked it on the graders also, uh, we approve this and you do the order, then the price is set. Price is it's set. Okay. yeah, it is because in talking to other fellows out in the construction world, uh, I think we had four price increases last year on this kind of on equipment, and uh, that they're looking at more of them coming. Yeah. Uh, so I guess it's just if this yes. locks, if this will uh, give us to go ahead to per order this thing and lock the price in, yeah. well, then that's I think uh, the move we have to make. Yeah. We're, we're madam. Uh, Mayor and Council, we're very fortunate to have secured a 2022 truck 
Um, so, so this particular truck is a 2022 truck in the lot. The other three quotes were 2023 trucks that had yet to be built and there was going to be significant increases on those trucks alone. So we're very fortunate to have found this 2022 truck. Okay, any further comments or questions? I am seeing none, all in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you very much. Spend it wisely. Don't spend it all in one place, Mr. Mr. Broadbent. With that, I'm going to ask uh, for someone to move us in camera. Councillor Wanchuk, all in favor? Just a note, Councillor um, Vandenberg is leaving for a Okay, thank you and welcome back. Uh, coming out of camera, the only motion we made was uh, from Councillor Belazer to come out of camera, but I believe Councillor Scobie has a motion he'd like to put on the table at this time. Go ahead, Councillor Scobie. As to the recommendation, I'd like to move <coughs> that uh, Council authorizes administration to commence negotiations for the purchase of this gravel property and then uh, bring us back a solid business plan as to the uh, feasibility of it all. Okay. Motion is on the screen. Is that acceptable, Councillor Scobie? Councillor Smith? Again, just looking at it, I would be more likely to support the first part of that, the Ladue County Authorize administration to commence with negotiations for the Genesee gravel property, but I can't vote for it today. Uh, the second part that we bring back a solid business plan because we haven't met the needs of the information. So um, for me, if you, okay, the first that's sentence. What I'm referring okay. to is the, yeah. bring the information. Yeah, yeah. So the first sentence definitely. I think again, based on our debate, I think it's a good idea to go out and find out what the costs are, find out what the options are, and then maybe bring back uh, have a report from admin. So. So, and that perhaps the friendly amendment is that administration bring back additional information related on the, to the on the initiative report. on the initiative. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's what I'm intending yeah. on. Yeah. Just thought business what, case. Or just of, such a business yeah, case. Yeah, business case. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we'll have two pieces. We'll have some information on negotiation. We'll have some pieces on uh, further information and comparisons. Question, answer, go ahead. Is there a timeline that we need to add into this? Uh, no, I think uh, it is a little bit dependent on the the uh, proponent uh, timeline. So as soon as we get uh, clarification from that individual, we'll bring it something back. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, motions on the floor, question around timeline, dependent on the uh, proponent. So we are a little bit out of our hands. Anything else, Councillor Lewis? Just a comment. I would not support this if uh, Councillor Scobie did not add the additional of uh, bringing back information prior to. So I will support this today because that's there. Okay, thank you. All in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we will adjourn at uh, 2.32.
Thanks all. Is it still cold outside?